Welcome to my world. 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 This is Lexi. I'm Suzanne Ridgeway, and welcome to my channel. If you're new, thank you so much for dropping by and checking me out and clicking on my link. This is my overstock pantry shelves. And we're going to inventory them today. I haven't done that in a while, but I do rotate my stock. So anything that is in the front is older stock. And why you should rotate your stock is because you're using the oldest first and keeping the newest first so you don't get anything outdated in your cupboards. This is one of my many areas that I have space for to keep our overstock. And we're going to concentrate on the silver rack today. Otherwise, it would make the video too long if I did it everywhere in the house where we store stuff. If you're new, look for that subscribe button and a smash on it. We like to do cleaning, decluttering, and organizing videos. This is the inventory video. You'll find this in the Let Us Eat playlist linked down below and all other playlists. We're going to get started. I'm going to start by doing it in zones. Zone 1, Zone 2, Zone 3, Zone 4 the four shelves. And then if you wanted to zone it further, you assess the situation, you go through to see what you have and categorize it if yours are in shambles. Mine are already categorized, so I just have to do the counting in the first few zones. We're gonna get started and we're gonna go into fast play. One kind of tools you'll need to do your inventory is paper and a pen and I have that handy here. Hello everybody we're in fast play finding a blank sheet of paper and you see me pointing out the canned goods we're going to start all the way to the left here and count the black beans some of them are mixed in with pinto beans and then we're going to use a tally system to write everything down with what they are to count easier especially if I find something out of place later on while we're counting then I can just add a tally mark and continue on my way. Now we're on the tuna fish. Then we're on to the canned chicken. Then we'll go on to the Hormel canned chicken. And then the canned mixed vegetables. We like to stockpile certain things. Things are getting expensive. And I like to have them on hand for quick, easy, friendly pantry dinners. That you can just pull from your shelves and your freezer. This is why it's important to inventory what you have because you're going to be reducing that food bill and you're going to be saving money. And I found a can out of place and I put it where it belonged. And we're going to go through and count to see what's here. Found some potato soups that don't belong, cream of potato, and count the peas and then the peanut butter on the end, which I have four of. Turning our attention to my notebook, this is everything I wrote down with the tally mark system. And I had found that extra can that was where it wasn't belong, and I added in with a little line. And crossing them out when you get groups of five it makes things easier and makes the counting system run a lot smoother. Now we're going to count everything in here. We have three ramen. And then we're going to see how many rices I have. And rather than just writing down rice, I want to see what types of rice I have. So when I'm at the Dollar Tree or wherever they sell the packet rices, I know what I have and I don't overspend. Inventorying is all about reducing your food bill and not overspending and keeping that stockpile healthy. So we have different types of rices. I have refried beans that I also keep in here because it is a packet. And I remove anything that's foreign within the bin. I'm going to get them all tucked in and then with the ramen and get put back. Moving right along, we're looking at my stockpile of our pasta. I've got deluxe, right down to with the tally marks. Then we're going to look to see what else we have including the ziti, New York State Pasta. That's what I'll call it. No particular brand. I think it's a rigatoni. Then go through to see if the thick and thin spaghettis with the linguine. Write them all down separately so I know what I have and I don't buy extra 
with the last box of pasta on the table. On the table now is my basket of beans and rice and egg noodles. We have egg noodles. I have bagged macaroni. I have brown rice. I have lentils. I have northern white beans. I have red beans. I have pinto beans. I have Mexican rice all in this bin and I keep them organized and categorized and I make sure that they're stockpiled and a good healthy amount for making those quick soups, stews, or casseroles for easy weeknight meals. Similar to the rice and beans bin, we have my bagged mixes. I have Pillsbury and Bisquick. These are good water-based biscuit mixes. I have taco seasoning and the Velveeta cheese that I just showed you, brown gravy mix. I have a jambalaya, which is always good to have on hand. And then I have these seasoning mixes, as well as some mashed potatoes on the table here, which I may pick up another one because there's only one. Then we're going to write everything down using the tally system, writing the name of each product. And each new bin is going to have a header, so I know exactly what's in that category. So I can just write down seasoning mix. With the header, use styles and types of the mixes. So when you're putting your data into your phone later, you know what you have on the paper. After you've written that down, I have my miscellaneous pile of stuff to show you here. I have a coating mix, stuffing, brownies, pancakes, Hungry Jacks, and then all these hot chocolate packets on to the right. I want to count how many of these I have. My kids drink hot chocolate all year long, and I want to know if I need to buy another case or not. I know my son will be taking back at least half of this pile of hot chocolate to college when he goes back after his winter Christmas break. And then you just write everything down, what type of boxes they are with your miscellaneous, and how many hot chocolate packets you have. So that way you know if you need to buy them or not to reduce your food bill to save you money. And you'll be saving hundreds a month when you inventory your food. On to the final shelf. These are all my canned goods, and I quickly put them into category because the bottom shelf, I just kind of put everything wherever, and I didn't know what I have. I am working on the piles of food here. I have Campbell's soup, I have sandwiches, I have panko, I have mayonnaise, cream soups, extra peas, found spaghetti, and a soup mix that were fallen onto that shelf. I have jellies and mayonnaise and other canned goods uh, such as prego and manwich, just all kinds of different variety of items, chickpeas. Then my cream soups, we have about five cream of mushroom, two cream of potatoes, and a cream of celery. I'm going to put a new header for the cream soups. That way I can just write down cream of mushroom, I can write down celery, I can write down potatoes, and I know they're all cream soups. And then I found another refried beans and a red sauce, and I'll put the refried beans onto the actual refried beans section that we did earlier in the video, continuing writing everything down, including the two items that fell, and I'll refer back to the spaghetti area and add another tally mark to the spaghetti. It is a thick spaghetti. So you're going to write it down with the thick spaghetti. And then I'm going to put the soup mix with the mixes. Inventorying can be tedious, but it is worth all the hard work. So you know exactly what you have on your shelves so you can save yourself money. This is my skinny bin from walmart.com. It is very useful. It fits nice and tucked in between the freezer and the pantry shelves. And I found some extra canned goods. That is just a case of extra deodorant that we keep on hand. I stockpile on hygiene products. I have cornflakes, I have Pop-Tarts, I have pizza sauce, and I have syrup. And now we're going to get it put back. So that is it for this video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today and doing an inventory on everything I have so I can reduce my food bill and meal plan better. And it's, all the data is written down. This will go into my phone. Now there's a few places you can store them on your phone. You have a notepad available to you, or you can send it to email and have a folder set up for pantry shelves. And that way you know you'll go into that email and you'll see your, your list of everything you do, or if you have a laptop, put it on to Excel. This is all categorized and it's counted, and I know what I have. And I know what canned goods I need to pick up when I go to my local Hannaford's because Dollar Tree's just not carrying them. We do giveaways every 100 subscribers. If you're new, smash on that subscribe word. The gift cards are listed down below what we give away, $10 amounts. And if you're new, you must comment in order to qualify. You need to be subscribed in the United States residence. We're also looking for 10 people to give out one five items prize pack from the Dollar Tree valued at $6.25 or your choice of a gift card. 
rules are listed down below. If you've won in the past 60 days, you have to wait out 60 days. We're not responsible for lost or stolen prizes by mail. If you're chosen and you'll answer within two, you'll be disqualified. We have a newsletter. If interested, I can get that out to you. We launched December's just recently. Email me, contributes1268 at yahoo.com. All of our social sites are also linked down below with the playlist. Thank you for your continuing ongoing support. Smash on that subscribe board for more great organizing and things videos. Happy counting and happy holidays from Let Us Eat.